with uh let's start the session so good evening all today we are going to be talking about relapse prevention and <clears throat> next slide so i will be discussing the following points during uh, in the session next so let's start with uh, the definition of relapse so broadly speaking relapse is return to something that has been uh, previously stopped so in, uh, but, uh, when we talk in terms of addiction, it is a state in which the individual returns to its continuous pattern of taking the substances after a period of abstinence. So before the uh, individual uh, get into this relapsed state, he will be remaining abstinent or he will be remaining in a sober state for a certain period of time. Uh, only after a certain period of time, he will be getting back to his old pattern of taking the substances. So relapse is multidimensional. It has got emotional aspect. As we know, it is not so pleasant and mental aspect, which is connected to our thinking and physical component. Of course, that is physiological changes that can be seen in the uh, person, like uh, the disruption in sleep, appetite, etc. And relapses, of course, is a process which involves a series of maladaptive changes. That is, uh, before the individual uh, get back to his uh, earlier pattern of taking the substances, he undergoes a series of maladaptive changes that can eventually lead to relapse. So during this process, he may have some indicators or he may experience as a warning signs. So uh, next slide. The triggers, uh, these are called triggers. So these triggers are stimuli that set off an event. So once we identify how the person is different when they were in their uh, relapsed state versus in the recovery state, what uh, we need to start talking about these triggers. So what are these triggers or uh, uh, we need to start uh, like uh, what was them or we need to look at for stimuli that are setting off these events. Uh, this uh, stimuli could be that of uh, a phone call from his uh, for, uh, from his friend or maybe the thoughts revolved around his earlier drinking uh, patterns or his memories uh, around this earlier drinking something like that. So these are a variety of different triggers that can set off an event and being aware of these triggers can help them from. Uh, preventing these relapses. And triggers can be uh, visual, visual in the sense which visual is something, anything that can be seen. That is a sight of a bar or watching a movie where people use uh, substances can be a trigger for someone. And auditory triggers are uh, something that hear, that is something that uh, if you hear something that reminds you of the use in the past. And some for some it is tactile, Triggers. Tactile triggers are most commonly seen among the needle users. So that is something that is related to the touch. That is, uh, if uh, if the yeah, for the needle users, for example, something tight around the arms can be a trigger. And olfactory is uh, which is related to the smell. Uh, the smelling, our sense of smell is one of our greatest triggers for memories. So uh, during our uh, clinical practice, we can uh, if we come across a person who has olfactory triggers. We can ask them to keep uh, keep uh, something pleasant smelling with them always. That is, we can ask them to keep uh, a favorite deodorant or a favorite uh, perfume on that uh, towel spray. Keep them along with them wherever they go if they have this olfactory triggers. And in cognitive triggers, it is uh, it is a kind of thought triggers. Next. <clears throat> So as we discussed, uh, uh, the relapse is multidimensional. We will discuss in detail about this uh, types of relapses, such as emotional, mental, and physical relapse. Next. In emotional relapse, uh, your emotions and behaviors become negative and unpleasant. So what happens during uh, this emotional relapse is that whenever your emotions or behaviors become negative, this negative emotions or behaviors can erode all those positive behaviors or all those uh, coping strategies the individual has developed during his uh, recovery stage. All those can erode, can be eroded and this uh, make it difficult for them to experience pleasure. So whenever they uh, uh, find difficult, uh, difficulty in experiencing pleasure, they find ways to escape from this. This is where the relapse happens. And some of the signs of emotional relapse include bottling up emotions. Bottling up emotions is that uh, where the individual feels uh, tensed or they may feel depressed or they feel that they are hopeless or they may help, they may feel helpless or they feel uh, good for nothing. All these uh, emotions get bottled up and they start isolating from them, uh, from uh, others or they're from their friends. 
and they start breaking up the routine breaking up the routine uh, uh we say like during the recovery stage uh the person may have developed some routine to remain sober so uh, all this uh, during their emotional relapsing state this person will start postponing all those routines or all those uh, routines they have developed or they may stop doing these things and they may also have uh, exhibit some poor self care uh, so in self care we uh, talk in terms of emotional psychological and physical care physical care of course we know about the sleep and appetite and in emotional and psychological self care we mean the time the individual find for themselves or the uh, how how do they see themselves or how do they criticize or how do they find themselves in uh, during these stages all this can, should be analyzed during our sessions or during our follow up sessions and of course uh, can you please okay when individual exhibit poor self care or they were uh, leave in this emotional relapse uh, for a long time uh, they may feel uncomfortable like they begin to feel restless irritable or they may feel discontent discontent and when this tension builds up uh, uh, as i said earlier they start finding ways to escape out of this and uh, most of the time for a uh, addictive behavior beha uh, for uh, for an addictive individual the best way to escape is to find find out to return to his old pattern of using the substances next so in next is the mental relapse so in mental relapse uh, there is a war going on inside the people's mind so uh, part of them want to stay positive but uh, as you know well, when there is a war inside they may want to stay positive but at the same time they may also find it difficult to tolerate the distress they are undergoing so when they uh, when this mental relapse uh, get deeper their cognitive resistance to relapse diminishes and the uh, and they need to escape increases and the relapse occurs next the some of the signs of mental relapse includes uh, focusing on the negatives and having pessimistic pessimistic or helpless or helpless, helpless attitudes and if you had an addiction you may also be thinking about the people or places or things you used to be or glamorizing your past uses like uh, minimizing the consequences that you have faced during the past use and lying to themselves and others and justifying the behaviors or minimize the impact of the drinking uh, all this can be a sign of mental relapse and in the physical relapse is the physical relapse is the uh, third and the final stage where the individual start using again during this stage uh, the individual has made up his mind that he uh, where he exhibits or he displays the drug seeking behavior in physical relapse we see lapse as well as relapse relapse is the initial uh, drink or it uh, like taking a uh, one glass of uh, alcohol or something like that lapse is a return to the uncontrolled using next an examples of uh, physical relapse or drug seeking behaviors include uh, driving to the liquor store the individual himself will drive to the liquor store to get uh, the alcohol or the substances he wanted and he will be calling a dealer to get get it and lying to make it easier to use and also he will start going to the places uh, Uh, where you are earlier, you uh, you used to take the substances and also hang out with the friends. You know, you will be using next. And this uh, and these are the uh, three types of relapses that is commonly seen among the addictive behaviors. And let's discuss about the interventions that can be used to reduce these relapses. And first one is the handling and uh, identifying the high risk situation. so whenever we uh, come across an individual who had been relapsed we uh, we can ask them to list out the past relapses or the situations uh, where they feel that where there is a risk for them to get uh, for restarting their substances so we can first of all we can ask them to list down all those things and it is like preparing them for a uh, preparing the soldier for before they're going to a battlefield that is we have to prepare them to face the situation the better the preparation the lesser will be the chances of the relapses so the size of situations that can vary from person to person for some of them uh, like sitting up uh, like feeling of long of uh, lonely feeling or the feeling of rejection can be a triggering event for one and uh, for some of them it can be uh, getting into a party or going uh, going with the friend to the party or to a bar can be a triggering event or a high risk situation for the other 
and this sub uh, all these situations can trigger craving for the substances in an individual and as a clinician what we have to do is make them aware of the situation which will help them to prevent those relapses next and some of the common situations where the person can develop craving include the sight of a bar especially the one person uh, where the one the person used to frequent before and meeting friends with whom one was using drugs or passing by usual hangouts and peer pressure which uh, and also the parties saturday nights or weekends some environmental cues like eating non vegetarian food being home alone or family conflicts job stress or other stresses and having a lot of unscheduled uh, time or maybe a lot of uh, time for them to enjoy or can be a burden for them and negative emotions like frustration sadness or depression and positive emotions such as happiness excitement or feeling of accomplishment or over confidence can also be a, a situation where the person can develop craving and and craving is something next we have to help the individual to handle this craving and first technique is a post postponement or the urge surfing in uh, urge surfing is a technique uh, where we use the waves as a metaphor uh to help or to help or to teach the client to gain control over the impulses to use the drugs or alcohol so here what we use uh, what we uh, what we what we have to do is to make them understand that the cravings or the craving is like a uh, ocean wave so which uh, uh, uh which gradually builds up or this uh, urges for them the our urges are like the waves which gradually builds it's a wills in intensity or they pick up for a some time and they fade they fade away so while uh, while riding out this uh, urges we have to practice some skills to handle these urges this is where comes the four d's or halt avoiding halt or something like that like during this uh, intense craving stages we can advise our client to uh, practice four d's that is delay distract drink water and deep breathing and also we can avoid them to uh, we can ask them to avoid halt that is hunger anger loneliness and tiredness and also at the time of intense craving we can ask the patient to call a sober or a abstinent friend and also ask them to recall the negative consequences they had during the uh, past substance use period or, or can they can expect out of this you know, returning to the substance use this is something that we uh, uh, help them in their uh, handling craving so uh, before this earth surfing uh, like the client must uh, they must have a, a thorough understanding of the trigger triggers so we need to help them identify those triggers as well and also uh, we have to make them aware uh, we have to teach them like uh, like any other skill they need practice to uh, master the skills so tell your client that it, uh, and also it is obvious that they may also experience emotional discomforts while riding out on this urge it's like uh, intense craving or this craving is uh, where they can experience more uh, like emotional distress so tell them that it is normal to experience the emotional discomfort and uh, and also it is not and also getting into that is not only the way to remove that discomfort so we can ask them to practice all those things so when the urges go unfit Uh, we have to tell them that when these urges are unfit, the future chances of the urges are minimized as well. So next is uh, next intervention is teach them the drink refusal skills and assertiveness. So more <clears throat> one of the so commonly uh, common situation where the relapse occurs is through the peer pressure. So we have to teach them aware of this pressure tactic, peer pressure tactics. so one of some of the peer pressure tactics include pleading pleading like please give me the company just for a minute so uh, reassuring reassuring where the client uh, where your friend may be telling it's okay i will talk to your family so they won't be angry with you angry or they may show anger towards the person so you want to avoid me that is why you are not coming out with me so ridiculing so uh, ridiculing in the sense that uh, they may make fun of you like they may criticize you make uh, like i uh, telling you that are you planning to build an estate with all the money you have saved and challenging like if we are married you may uh, you, you may be threatened like you may be uh, challenged as you are a slave to your wife so all this can be a pressure tactics and threatening so you don't want your friendship 
so we have to uh, teach them about this pressure tactics next and once we uh, teach them about the pressure tactics we have to teach them also the refusal skills that can be used to deal with this pressure tactics and refusal skills are a specific set of skills which are related to dealing with the social pressures so during this uh, uh, pressure uh, during this intense peer pressure period we have to ask the client to refuse those offers and by refusing these offers they need to have a strong body languages and they must also have a confident tone of voice while refusing to drink or the use of drugs so in this situation what what we have to tell them is they have to respond immediately there should not be any delay in uh, telling the no or refusing the uh, refusing the request like when there is a delay in this uh, 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 refusing it is likely to increase the urge as well so uh, it, uh, once there is a delay they may also like i said but they may also include more pressure tactics where the person may how to change their decisions so we uh, we have always seen the patient where they have uh, find it difficult it is always difficult to say say no to a thing so uh, in clinical practice we might have also seen the uh, many of the patients reporting that it is uh, they find it very difficult to say no or they may find it difficult uh, they may find it guilty or uh, uh, what unpleasant to say no to someone who is special or someone who is uh, very close to them so we have to ha uh, help them can you please share okay we have to also make them uh, teach on how to refuse this in a very uh, pleasant or in a very friendly manner without breaking the friendship as well so making excuses for not using won't work in this situation so they will be again pressure for use uh, for use again probably in the uh, the future as well so no can be followed by changing the subject or suggesting the alternative activities or clearly requesting that the individual to not to offer the alcohol or drug again in the future so we can tell it in this way listen i have decided to stop and i would like you to, to not to ask me to use with you anymore if you can't do that i think you should stop coming over to my house this is something we need to help the client to practice in uh, refusing the request next so we can uh, help the individual to practice this through individual role plays between the substance user and the therapist this is the best way to enhance his drink refusal skills uh, during this session uh, the individual can be rehearsed on uh, different ways to of uh, refuse this offers and next is to learn to be assertive that we can also ask the patient to remain assertive in the sense that they have to remain on their or uh they have to remain on the decision of not using the substance so assertiveness is the ability to insist and stand up for one's own rights without hurting others or violating their rights so people with substance use are seen to be unassertive and thereby frequently land up in a situation they find it impossible to refuse the offer so it is of useful if the person is constantly pressured to leave the place by saying politely i can see that you won't take no for an answer so i am leaving so in this situation we can ask the patient if the even after say uh, refusing the request they, if they are insisting them to use again we can ask them to leave situation as immediately as possible and next is the dealing with faulty cognitions like overconfidence helplessness etc <clears throat> so a person's faulty thoughts very often becomes a problem for him or her and leads to a relapse example i can stay away from alcohol nothing can tempt me this uh, consequences is uh, the individual going to the parties where alcohol may be available telling my uh, telling himself so that i will go but i will not drink and end up in drinking this is a uh, cognitive error where where you can see that the overconfidence in the pe person has uh, ended up in drinking so we have to help them identify this uh, identify them uh, identify help the patient uh, person identify that these are red flag thoughts or the dangerous thoughts that need to be tackled or uh, and they need to have challenge these thoughts as well next in case of on over confidence we can ask the patient to challenge the thoughts in this way what truth do i have that nothing can tempt me 
what happened before and every time in the past when i did something like this i ended up drinking continuously so what's the point in entertaining such thoughts again so uh, uh whenever you have you come across a patient who is overconfident in his uh, uh, so I mean, remaining abstinent we can ask them to keep all these points in mind like what proof uh, we can ask them about their earlier relapse situations where they have uh, ended up drinking in such similar situation so you can ask them to provide the proof for uh, proof for that and also what has happened uh, in the same situation before so uh, we can also ask them to uh, whenever they uh, have come across this kind of thoughts they have always ended up in drinking so again entertaining these thoughts can be problematic for them so we can ask them to reflect on those th on those thoughts so as well and we can also ask the patient as a homework we can ask, also ask the patient to keep a worksheet of these things red flag thoughts like uh like we said uh, earlier it was over confidence like nothing can tempt me was a tempt me was a red flag thought in the patient so similarly uh like uh i see uh another red flag thought can be like my life has no meaning so it is uh, it is getting worse day, day by day this is a uh, red flag thought so we have to teach them the red flag thoughts that can come across come uh, during their uh, recovery stages so state what is wrong with it challenge those thoughts and create new statement ask them to state uh, what is wrong with this thoughts and also challenge those thoughts and also create new statements Uh, against these thoughts, this is a homework that can be given to the patient, or to deal with the faulty cognition. And we are, uh, and also, and the uh, relapsing situation is uh, where you have the negative mood states. So handling the negative mood states, it's uh, important that first step is to be aware of one self defeating thoughts or depressed mood. We have to help them identify their own self defeating thoughts or the depressed moods. and also help them identify or realize the adverse consequences of this negative thoughts and we can ask them to create opposite or positive thoughts or challenge that challenges those negative thoughts and uh it's not over and ask them to ignore those negative thoughts or not responding to them and also we can ask them to accept them as they are or oneself as really is and what strengths as well as the limitations with their strengths as well as with the limitations and also ask them to keep a realistic self expectation all this uh, this can help them to handle their negative mood states next my next is having a balanced lifestyle so recovering uh, so during the stage of recovery we are, we have to always help the patient to keep a balanced lifestyle like they have to make appropriate changes to achieve a balance in their lifestyle so it, this is to decrease the level of stress this can help them to uh, uh have a positive life or they can have they can this can help them in reducing their stress level as well we can ask the, we can assess a client's lifestyle by asking all these questions we saw her daily activities so how how was she spending the time and the source of stress they have and the balance between the pleasure and external demands and the time they have spent in exercise or relaxation patterns or inter interpersonal activities and religious beliefs all this can be elicited from the patient in order to understand their lifestyle uh, the current lifestyle and we can make them we can modify them accordingly next and next is the use of pharmacological agents as a, as an adjunct to uh, adjunct to psychosocial treatment so psychosocial along with the psychosocial treatment we have to uh, keep the client with the pharmacological agents as well combination of both always works so uh, and pharmacological treatment should focus on decreasing the craving uh, and to replace the harmful substances in the treatment of uh, treatment of substance abusers like uh, if they are been using a uh, substances like uh, what in case of cocaine or something like that they have to be replaced with uh, other things so we can use the pharmacological agents to replace it next is the role of family So the family plays an important role in preventing as well as helping the person remain the alcohol. So, uh, in in the uh, relapse prevention, what is what we have to focus is on the family. So, family is, plays an important role in relapse prevention or in the uh, during the addict uh, 
recovery stage. So we have that they are the supporters for them. So some of the tips that can be that we can tell the family or the spouse includes the follows. Realize that alcohol or drug dependence is a disease and not a moral weakness or a lack of willpower. So whenever uh, a person is admitted to the ward or whenever uh, the family brings up the person, they feel that uh, he has been using it, uh, uh, he has been moving out of this moral uh, moral sense. So it is uh, his moral weakness that has led him to uh, this uh, drug use or it is his uh, lack of confidence or his lack of willpower that has made him to think. So make them aware that alcohol is alcohol or drug dependence is, is a disease which needs treatment. It is not a moral weakness or something like that. It is not out of his uh, hatred towards the family who has started using their substances or uh, drinks as well. And we ask them to not to argue or quarrel or just quarrel with them or justify his or her use of substances or uh, take up the responsibility of covering up for the consequences of the substance use. So uh, we may also have seen that uh, whenever the family will be will be, will get in conflict with the uh, user, like substance user, or they may uh, continuously quarrel with the patient, uh, or they may argue uh, with the uh, substance user. And in other cases, there are also uh, situations where the family take up the responsibility of the consequences of the substance user like if, if he have uh, made some financial uh, liability to the family or if he has made some uh, the family will cover up all those things or they may justify his uh, behavior like uh, it is because of his, because his father has been drinking like that so it is that, that is why he is drinking so he has come up, up come from such a situation so all this situation during uh, maybe i have uh, treated him wrongly that is why he has been doing like that so in a way, uh, the family will also justify this behavior. So we have to ask them not to, uh, not to cover up the, all those consequences. And in case of post, we can ask them in uh, matter couples, we can ask the spouse not to suspect. For example, don't start questioning whether he has had a drink or used drugs or not. Uh, when he is not, when he has come out, uh, when he comes home after days of, days of work, or do not make phone calls to his friends or colleagues to check if he's drinking or using a drug. This is most commonly seen among the uh, marital couples, like uh, uh, where the spouse make phone calls to his friends or to the, his workplace to see that if, he's in, uh, if he has been there or he's, you know, he has started using it again. So he may, anyway, he may come up, come up knowing that the, his spouse has called or he, he, or she, or he or she had made an inquiry about his, uh, uh, he, about his thinking or something like that. This can again be uh, a negative, this can also bring some negative consequences where the person feels that he is not being trusted or whatever he does can uh, is not be uh, what the family is not be believing him. So he may again go back to his earlier pattern of drinking. Uh, and also we can ask them to pay extra attention to his needs like uh, nutrition, medication and health as well. And do not his, uh, and also, uh, we can ask them to not to discuss his previous drinking or drug use problem with others, maybe in front of him or maybe when uh, during his absence. So arranging follow-ups, as we have discussed earlier, uh, relapse is a process and is ongoing and, um, uh, and, and relapse is gradual as well. So follow-up is a very important component. Uh, <clears throat> And one needs to check how poor she is handling the urges or any physical or emotional disturbances following stoppage of substances. So whenever he comes up for the follow-ups, so if after uh, the uh, we have seen the stages of change cycle, right? So uh, when the patient is in the relapse stage, or uh, sorry, when the patient is in, is in the maintenance stage, whenever he comes up for the follow-up, we have to ask them, how do you handle your, your urges? Or how have you been managing all these weeks? Or we can also ask them about the physical or emotional disturbances they have been uh, experiencing all through these uh, stages of recovery or maybe uh, after his uh, 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 stoppage of drinking or after the stoppage of taking the substances, uh, what were the difficulties they were facing or how, how, been manage, how they've been managing all those uh, difficult circumstances. <clears throat> and we can also ask them to, uh, uh, ask them about the time management or uh, how they'll be managing the time, job or family, etc. All this needs to be discussed uh, during the follow-up sessions. 
and also we have we can ask them about the high risk situations uh, they have recently come across and how how did they manage and did they uh, feel like getting back to it and how did they manage their emotions or their cognitions all this needs to be assessed next And also, uh, therapists can ask appropriate questions to understand both recovery and relapse. If he is in the recovery stage, that is, if he is maintaining, uh, if he is abstinent, uh, we can ask them like, what were the high risk situations or warning signs you faced since your discharge or last sessions, and what did you do to deal with them, and what were the consequences of your successful dealing with the triggers and relapse cues? Example like, you felt good about yourself, your family relationship improved, etc. These are the questions that can be asked to a person who is abstinent. And if there is a relapse, uh, if there is a lapse, like if there is a simple taking of substance, we can ask them where, how, what were they thinking, what were the feelings and thinking, and what were their expectations about what alcohol use would do for them, and what will happen if you continue to drink or use a drug. All these uh, questions can be uh, helpful for the patient to reflect on uh, in which stage he's on. <clears throat> so following the identification of the triggers and of the uh, salient consequences, the patient should be engaged in problem solving and the methods of relapse prevention. So during the follow-up, we have to help them on this problem solving techniques and also the relapse prevention techniques as well. Uh, uh, and the follow-up is very essential uh, to ensure that the relapse risk is minimized. So, and also the follow-up needs to be frequent that we can, uh, uh, that uh, maybe first three to six months, uh, there is a chance for the relapse is very high. We can make a frequent follow-ups. And the aim of the whole process is to enable the person to identify the relapse even and strengthen the person's ability to handle such situations effectively. And uh, in this relapse prevention uh, process, what we are focusing is to help the person or the help the patient to identify those events that can trigger this relapse situations and also strengthen them to handle this effectively. I think that this is end of the session. Thank you all for listening.